Good morning, Knicks Nation. I hope everyone is well today. I hope you are COVID free today and that if you have been sick, that you're recovering fully and that the Most High is blessing your way today and providing all your needs. Today, we're going to discuss a player that had been controversial in Knicks Nation, at least with me. When I first saw this player, I was not high on it, what I saw. But I saw, I have to admit, I saw on a cursory level. I was, I hadn't looked deep into him. Uh, this is Tyrese Halliburton. I saw that funny jump shot. I saw that skinny frame and I said, no way, no way, no way. So I decided, since he came up on several mock drafts, let me take a close look at this player. And boy, when I did, I have to say, my mind changed. First off, uh, Tyrese Halliburton, 6'5", 175 pounds. And, you know, the jump shot that he has, the, the deep three jump shot, um, cause he does jump on, on mid range and, and, and then inside the three point line jump shots. But from uh, beyond the arc, he doesn't jump. It's almost like a set shot. And I thought to myself, there's no way he gets that shot off in the NBA. But then I looked at several uh, videos of him. And um, first, the shot became, was familiar to me, strangely, because it's not really in a broken shot. What it is, is an old fashioned shot. That's the shot that you would see a, a guy from the 50s shoot like a Bob Cousy. That, that's the shot that actually that shot. Is what the way Magic Johnson would shoot his three pointers, and Magic Johnson, he he, I also listened to his uh, interview, his combine interview, uh, is his favorite player. So it all made sense. Uh, he's he's basically a throwback type of player. Um, so that explained the shot, and now I I truly believe the shot will translate. Number one of all the players. I have looked at, and you guys have seen, I have put almost every, in fact, almost every day except for weekends, I have put out videos on various players with the Knicks and their scenario with the Knicks. As a matter of fact, I want you all to understand the reason, the only reason I look at players is how they fit on the Knicks under Tom Thibodeau and how they would help the current crop of youth that we have. So I want to see how they work with, with uh, Mitchell Robinson, with RJ Barrett and with Frank. I want to see how they help Kevin Knox push his development and also even Dennis Smith Jr. I want to see how it works with him. Um, now, and now, you know, there's been trade rumors, obviously, uh, particularly including Dennis Smith Jr. with regard to a couple of NBA teams, but I'm going to assume that we're keeping our youth until they trade. It's one of our youth. So I just assume they're keeping the only person I assume that they're actually trading is Julius Randle. And I assume the only veterans they're going to pick up the option on are those veterans that's going to help us depending on the scenario we have, but they're going to help us in terms of the development of our youth. Okay. If they're not helping developing our youth, if they're just taking minutes from a guy that could be playing, uh, I, I think they should let him go. Period. Um, so, um, and then any youth that we would draft. Okay. So Therese Halliburton. Uh, of all the players I looked at, is the highest IQ player that I've seen in this draft by far. It's not even close. He is the highest. He is a, a basketball computer, a coach on the floor, and he's only nineteen, just turned twenty. Okay, so he and, and this is the thing. For I just want y'all to know where I'm coming from. Uh, for for our Knicks team under Tom Thibodeau this year, what I am looking for. Is two way players that play multiple positions and can defend multiple positions. So let's say that again. There's two way players. That means they can play offense well and defense well. They can play multiple positions on the floor and they can guard multiple positions on the floor. Cause in the Tom Thibodeau defense, if that, if you have that, you become very, you know, dangerous team. Even without a superstar, you become a very dangerous team. And so, as I also said, with the Knicks over the last few years, uh, you're going between 21 wins and 17 wins. 
22 wins and 17 wins. If we can get 35 wins this year, I consider that a very good step forward. Even though in my heart of hearts, I think we can get more than that. That's what I'm shooting for. I don't want to over, over, uh, estimate what the Knicks can do. 35 of a 82 game season. So whatever the equivalent would be in a shorter season. Still don't know how many games the next season is going to be or when it's going to start. So we'll just go with the 82 game season and I'm looking for 35 wins. Um, so Tyrese Halliburton is a high IQ basketball player. He is a two way player. He can guard multiple positions at six foot five, 175. He has a seven foot wingspan and he knows how to use it. Okay. He played on a, a bad Iowa State team. A bad, they were five, they, they won 12 games this year, 12 and 20. Similar to Cole Anthony, who played on a bad North Carolina team that won 14 games. But the thing is about Halliburton, like for example, when you talk about Cole Anthony, I, I got their comparisons up here. Cole Anthony, 6'3, 184, and his wingspan is about 6'4. You know, he doesn't have much of a wingspan. He's about the same age as Tyre, as Tyrese. And both of them were hurt during this past season and played 22 games. Both of them played heavy minutes for their teams. Uh, Cole Anthony played 35 minutes and, and Tyrese Halpern played 37 minutes as well a game. So they both play heavy minutes when they did play. But the thing, the, the, the stat that, that jumps out at me when I'm looking at these two players, both on bad teams. Okay. Is the uh, turnover to assist ratio. Because both, I know, I, I know what both of them had this problem. Like if they made a pass, uh, or if they made a nice pass, it, they wouldn't get the assist because their teammate would not make the shot. Or if they made what would become a hockey assist because they saw the play developing and the, the teammate would not make the shot or somebody would turn the ball over. That wasn't them. And so you had a lot of that on a, both of them on bad teams. Now Cole Anthony averaged four assists a game, but he also averaged four turnovers a game. Whereas Tyrese Halliburton averaged six assists a game and three turnovers. That's a two to one ratio. That's what you look for. Okay. Um, also what jumped out at me is the plus minus, uh, that they both had or plus minus. So of course, Halliburton shot 42% from three and, and Cole shot 35. Cole forced more, uh, shots than, than Tyrese, which is part of the point. Tyrese Halliburton gets his teammates involved, even if they don't complete the play. He, he, that's part of his game, getting his teammates involved. Okay. Um, but their plus minuses, uh, the, the total plus minus, the offensive plus minus for Howard Button was eight, the plus minus for Anthony was three. So that means they score eight more points a game when he's on the floor for Halliburton. They score three more points when he's on the floor for Cole Anthony. Both not bad, but obviously Halliburton better. The defensive plus minus, they allow four points less a game. When Halliburton was on the floor, they allowed 1.8 points less a game when Cole Anthony was on the floor. So the total plus minus is 12 for Halliburton and 5 for Anthony. So uh, uh, Halliburton made his team 12 points better when he's on the floor versus Anthony 5 points better. That's the sign of a player that gets everybody involved, even if they're not finishing. Okay, Even if they're out of position when he's in position. That's a player that's getting everybody involved. That's a player that makes his teammates better. Okay. And that's what Halliburton brings to the table. Tremendous IQ. Um, really good long range shooter. Ball handler. Can, can play the one or the two. So there goes your multiple positions on offense. He can, he can set up the offense. He doesn't, they, they list him as a point guard, but he really is just a guard. He can play either position. He can play off ball. He runs without the ball. Very intelligently. He does, he does, he makes the right plays. And of course, he can set up the offense as well. He does very well in a fast break situation. And of course, he does well in the half court, you know. Um, the kid has, does it all. He really does. He does it all. Um, the, 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 um, the negatives, uh, for him, which my, which my, which my, was my initial, one of my initial negatives is that he's light in the butt. He's small, you know, as far as weight, 175. He needs to get stronger as well. I wouldn't push him to put on weight. Like I said, I'm not, I, I don't believe in pushing a player to put on weight as much as I believe in them getting stronger, especially 19 and 18 year olds who are going to fill in anyway. I want to see them get stronger. 
they could get stronger and he could get stronger. Um, my, my other concern was the durability factor because he did miss 11 games, 10 games last year. He did miss 10 games and I saw he missed it due to a wrist injury and his team lost most of the games that he was not in. All right. Because he was the most valuable player on that team. So, um, they lost most games. I'm sure the same with Cole Anthony, but Halliburton gets his teammates involved. He's an all round player. He plays really good defense, plays the passing lane. Sometimes he gamble a little bit, but that, that's not, that's a minor thing when you're talking about a kid this much of an all round basketball player. So, um, yeah. And, and of course, uh, because of his frame, uh, sometimes he can be pushed out of position. Uh, other times he cannot finish through contact, but again, these are minor, these are not big deals to me. I mean, uh, a guy that can get into the lane that has floater game that can shoot the three point shot. And this is the thing he sets up so far behind the three point shot, just in terms of where he's standing. If a player does not come out on, on him and close him, he doesn't need much time to get that little set shot off. He gets it off pretty quickly. And if somebody comes out to guard him there, uh, guess what? It opens the floor. Cool. See, so now you have a guy that can open the floor for RJ. Okay. And I, I seven foot wingspan between him and Frank uh, 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 at the point of attack. That, that would be very good. That would be very, I was excited about Maxi. I'm more excited about this guy. He's better. As a matter of fact, and this is another thing. So I'm looking for two-way players that play multiple positions and can guard multiple positions. Two-way players that play multiple positions and can guard multiple positions. That's what I'm looking for in this draft, okay? And I'm looking for players that are the most NBA ready. And what do I mean? I want to make sure I, 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 I express this because a lot of people are suggest players that have talent but are not NBA ready. In other words, they can't add to our win total this year. They might be able to add to our win total in a couple of years, but not this year. Okay? LaMelo Ball, I see that as a situation. He's not NBA ready. He he got to develop a shot, some sort of shot, some sort of foul shot. Can't be shooting 60% from the line, 50%, 57% from the line. Okay. Got, got to be, and got to play some defense. RJ Hampton. Got, come on, 55, what, about six, less than 60% from the foul line. Um, 20%, 20 something percent from three. Got to be better. Got to develop, got to be able to harness that speed. Can't get lost on defense. These are the, that, I'm saying these guys got talent. I don't think they're NBA ready. Not for, not for what we need. We need somebody that's going to help us get the 35 wins this year. Okay. That's not a veteran that we don't have to trade away our young talent and draft picks to get somebody we could draft that's going to help us get the 35 wins. All right. So, um, as far as that, Halliburton's the, the best point guard, the best guard in this draft. He is because he can, he's going to help us get the 35 wins. He's going to make everybody on the floor better. Okay. Um, I like Killian Hayes. Uh, and, and if you, if we did draft him, I'm not going to cry about that, but he's not as NBA ready as Halliburton. He's closer than he, to me, Killian Hayes is closer to NBA ready than LaMelo Ball for sure, but he's not as ready as Halliburton. Halliburton could come in tomorrow and, and get this team, help this team get the 35 wins. That, that's, I, that's how I high am. As long as he doesn't get hurt. Okay. And that's the thing. Like, uh, uh, Kyra Lewis played all 31 of his team's game, played like 38 minutes a game, didn't get hurt. Or if he was hurt, you didn't know it because he was on the floor all the time. Okay. So that's a workhorse type of kid. Problem with Kyra Lewis is that Kyra Lewis commits a lot of turnovers and point guard is the hardest position to learn in the NBA. So he's going to commit a lot of turnovers his first year. Hey, it's natural. I don't think we're going to get the positive return we need overall while he develops. Like Luka Doncic commit a lot of turnovers, but he's so good at making everybody around him better that, okay, you'll, you'll live with that because he's going to put you in the playoffs. That's he, you know, he's going to, you're going to be looking at the playoffs with him every year because he's going to make everybody around him better. You just got to put somebody around him that could play decent. 
And if you get somebody that can play really good, then you're talking about going deep in the playoffs with Luka Doncic. That's that. That's what I'm saying. Kyra Lewis, speed, talent, no, no denying all that, but he's not going to help us get 35 wins this year. He's going to take a couple of seasons because he's going to turn the ball over a lot. Not only that, yeah, he doesn't fight through screens. He goes under more than he goes over, and, and that's going to be a problem also. So he, these things can be corrected, but Halliburton's already there. I mean, I mean, he's not. We don't have to teach him not to go under, to go over. He knows if the guy can't shoot. He'll go on and let him shoot. He, high IQ. Okay. Get all his teammates involved. That's what you want. So I'm looking at it like this. Vassell is still my guy, but Halliburton is too. Now, depending on which one we get. Now, I've seen mock draft. Really, I've only really seen, I think, one mock draft where Vassell gets drafted by the Hawks. That's the, and that particular guy, I think it's Ken Jackson, that the Hawks are his team. No, no, it's more hoops. The Hawks are his hometown favorite team. So he has them t- smartly drafting Vassell. But all the other marks have somebody else. It's either Halliburton they get, they get Onyeka Okongu, who I think they really should get Onyeka Okongu, but they have different players being drafted by the Hawks. So it depends on how it goes. I want Chicago to please take Danny Abdiva so we don't even have to talk about him. And then Cleveland, uh, sometimes people got Cleveland taking Okongu. Sometimes people got, got him, got them taking Obi Toppin. Sometimes people got him taking, uh, uh, Okoro, Isaac Okoro. Who knows? Cause I don't know what Cleveland's going to do. What thing I know they're not going to do is they're not going to take a guard. They're going to take a front court player. So it's going to be either a wing player, or three or four or five, you know, uh, because, um, they got Kevin Love, you know, and, and they got, they, they, they also have the guy they got from Detroit, you know, so, and then of course they still got Christian uh, Thompson, Tristan Thompson. They still got Tristan Thompson. So I don't know what they're going to do, but, um, I'm thinking that one of the cell or Halliburton should be there at eight. That's what I'm saying. Uh, so, Whichever one is available, somebody will say, well, if they're both available, what would you do? <laughs> ah, that's a hard choice, but I probably, dang, I don't know. I don't know, but I draft one of them and try to trade to get the other one. That's what I have to do it that way because I, I can't make up my mind between either of them. And depending on who is available and who we draft between those two at eight, uh, depends on what that, that also to me d- dictates what we're going to do with 27 and 38. So I'll give you an example. If we drafted Halliburton at eight, if we drafted him at eight, um, my 27 really doesn't change. I still want Desmond Bain at 27. I'm pretty sold on him at 27. If we could get him at 27. And then, uh, second round, I'm looking at 30. I'm looking at Paul Reed. Okay. That's if we drafted Halliburton. At eight. If we drafted Vassell at eight, which means that probably either they're higher on Vassell as the Knicks or Halliburton's gone, which is totally possible. Um, so we draft Vassell at eight. Uh, I'm still looking at, uh, Desmond Bain at 27. And I'm looking at Malachi Flynn at, uh, 38. And I like Terrell Terry. Like, like I said, Terrell Terry is, the best shooter in this draft. And there's some good shooters in this draft. But Terrell, Terrell Terry is, is, to me, hands down, the best shooter in this draft. But I don't think he's going to be there. Uh, in fact, he won't be there at 27. No no way. And he's not falling out of the first round. That's not going to happen. So um, so I w- if they drafted Vassell at 8, to me, that changes my 38 to, to Malachi Flynn. Uh, I want some scoring off the bench. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking for some shooters off the bench. Okay. So if we draft uh, Halliburton. He opens the floor. And then we get Desmond Bain as coming off the bench on the wing. He opens the floor. Then we have a guy we can really develop like a project, but he can, he has all-star talent. Uh, that's Paul Reed. We can get him in the second round. That's what I'm talking about. So with the team, the way that, the way I'm looking at the players now, um, if we do draft either Halliburton or Vassell, okay, and so your lineup, let's say, again, we're talking about Halliburton, so you're talking about Frank, Halliburton, Mitchell, uh, Mitchell Robinson, RJ Barrett, that changes to me what we do at the four. 
I don't want Davis Bertans at the four because he, he's not a two way player and he cannot guard multiple positions. Okay, and he can't, you know, he might be able to play a three or a four because, you know, the way he plays the game, but he cannot guard on the level we would need him to guard at. So I'm looking at, <laughs> well, if we could keep Bobby Portis and Taj Gibson and let the rest of them walk. We can keep Bobby Portis and Taj Gibson. Okay, Taj can back up Mitch at the five. He could also play four. And Portis can start at the four, can back up also at the five. So I like that. But if if the Knicks decide to let both of them walk, my now my number one guy at the four that I would like them to sign is Serge Ibaka. I want them to sign Serge Ibaka. Not even Christian Wood. I want Serge Ibaka because I want him on a two-year deal, overpay him, because Serge will come get the bag. He already got the ring. He's going to come get the bag. Otherwise, he would already sign with Toronto. But he's looking for that bag. So give it to him. Two years. Give it to him. And then we got to trade Randall. Now we have a defender at the four. Two-way player. Good three-point shooter at the four. And Serge Ibaka. Experienced guy. And he opens the floor also. Because he can shoot the three as well. Serge Ibaka is a good three-point shooter. So now you have Halliburton and Ibaka opening the floor for R.J. Barrett. And, and, and uh, Mitchell Robinson and Frank Milikina. You have a tremendous defensive team. And on the on the second unit, uh, if we did get Desmond Bain, I'm looking at, uh, let's say we got Malachi Flynn and Desmond Bain, right? I'm looking at either Dennis Smith Jr., Desmond Bain, and Dot coming off the bench between the point guard and the wings, right? Or Malachi Flynn, Desmond Bain, and Dot. So now you got three players. Because uh, one thing, uh, Malachi Flynn is 6'1", but he's a defender. He, he's a tough defender at 6'1". I think he was all defense in his conference um, this this past season. So uh, he's a tough defender. So you, you get Malachi Flynn, Dodd, who we know could play some defense and shoot the ball, and Desmond Bain, who can, is a two-way player. That's your second unit. <laughs> That's pretty good. And then you still have Taj Gibson. You might have Bobby Portis. You have, obviously, you have Kevin, right? Kevin's going to be at the four. So you, I, I'm just very excited about the possibilities here. So at eight, we got two guys now. Uh, to me, the, these are the two guys. It's either Devin Vassell or it's Tyrese Halliburton. Okay. That's, 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 what, that's to me, that's our eighth pick. Then we get. I, okay, either Desmond Bain, and if Bain is, which he very well could be taken before 27, he's moving up the board now. Other people are noticing him. Uh, if, if, if he is taken at 27, then I may have to go, um, Malachi Flynn. If Desmond Bain is there and Flynn is gone, I'm definitely looking at quickly. I'm definitely looking like a manual quickly at 38. Knicks were even yesterday uh, in the news. The Knicks were looking at quickly as the, the word said at possible thirty eight pick. So I would definitely take quickly at thirty eight. So Malachi Flynn is to me. I would take him before quickly. Quickly's my plan B if he's gone. Um, and then I want to get Paul Reed if we can. Um, and then I want Desmond Bain. I want Desmond Bain to me, uh, at 27. Even if we need to move up to 21 to get him, I want to get Desmond Bain because I think he's going to be a very good player. High IQ player shoots the rock. Okay. And, and, and he fits what I'm looking for in terms of a Tom Thibodeau coach team that a guy that can get us to 35 winners this year. So as far as free agents, if we able to get a Desmond Bain at 27, we don't really need to go invest any money. In a two guard. We don't need to. Because we'd have him right there. Okay. If we were go if we were going to draft, um uh, well, if we if we signed a Serge Ibaka for two years, we given Kevin that time to develop. Okay, Kevin's going into his third year, so he needs this season and another season to get into his fourth year. I think Kevin's fourth year is gonna pop. So if if Kevin becomes a disaster and doesn't pop. Okay, we gave him time. Okay, we could always go out and get a four. That'd be our last piece that we would need. And there's a lot of them available because I think there's going to be more available. So in, in the coming years, don't need necessarily a superstar yet, but 
Um, by the time we get into the 42, 44 win area, superstars be looking at us at that point. So see, we don't have to worry about searching for them. They'll be coming to us once we develop a team that can win on a consistent basis starting this season. So, uh, that's my take. Uh, I know y'all gonna ask about all kind of players. We can't draft everybody. Yeah. <laughs> we can't. We got three picks and we might get a fourth. If we trade Randall, we might get a fourth pick. And I'm not sure who I'd take. I'd, I'd probably try to get, if we didn't get Vessel, I'd try to get Halliburton. If we didn't get Halliburton, I'd try to get Vessel. You know, one of those, I get both of those if I can. Otherwise, I'm looking at, uh, aside from the guys I mentioned, I'm looking at Terrell Terry, if I could get him. Uh, but, uh, we can't draft everybody. People ask about all kind of players. We can't draft everybody. Okay. There's only 12 spots on the team. There's well, 15, technically. But, of impact players. Okay. We only have a couple of spots. So we'll be trying to get fill here. So, um, yeah, those are my guys. Vassell, Tyrese Halliburton, Desmond Bain, Malachi Flynn, uh, and then back behind him, Emmanuel Quickly and Paul Reed. Those are my guys. But at eight, uh, Des- Desmond Bain, I'm um, excuse me, uh, 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 Devin Vassell and, um, Tyrese Halliburton. Those, those are my guys at eight. Okay. Tell me what y'all think. Please have a good and safe day. Shalom.